You're listening to the Australian Water Association podcast series. My name is Joe Taranto and joining me is Matt Winkleman, the water resource engineer, and Arturo Babano, a Florida market leader for water with GHD. Uh, well, today we're discussing potable reuse in the US and the implications it has for us in Australia. Thanks so much for your time, guys. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Matt, I'll start with you. Given Australians really value uh, having safe drinking water and we understand that it's at times quite scarce for us. Are you surprised that potable reuse hasn't really taken off in Australia in the same way it has in the States? Uh, Certainly surprised. Um, Water security is a topic of interest in Australia, the same as the United States and other parts of the world. And potable reuse um, can be a great opportunity uh, with a great business case towards providing uh, water for for drinking and uh, for other uses. So yes, just in general, it is surprising given the experience that we've observed in the United States. And Arturo, tell us a little bit about um, some of the projects that you've been involved in in, in Florida. Uh, well, when when we talk about uh, potable reuse in the in the U.S., probably California is the is is the best example because they are so advanced. Uh, but Florida is an example of. Um, how you like in you i'm sure you do it in australia there's no one size fits all they take an approach that is completely different in california they like to treat the water to the utmost with the most stringent regulations before they put it in the ground in florida it's different because they have different aquifers they because they they have brackish water for drinking water so they have reverse osmosis plants for quote-unquote conventional uh, treatment so it's it's different, but uh, as GSD, we've had the fortune of being engaged on projects on both uh, states, and it's just fascinating to see how every state is adapting to this new water source in their own way. So the drivers for uh, doing things slightly differently, obviously you've talked about the fact that there are um, maybe geological or geographical changes um, or differences between the the states and the communities is is one of the the drivers the social kind of attitudinal differences as well Matt are you are you able to respond to that is, is is the attitudes of the community something that drives the way that you treat the water it certainly is um, the public needs to trust in the water science um, even the politicians that um, the water is just as safe to drink and use for yourself and for your family as the water you've been drinking conventionally. So the journey to get the public to uh, accept that it's just as safe um, can be a long one. And that's, I think, where um, it's taken time and maybe different paths even in the United States, where if you treat to a very high standard, then I think the public perceives the water to be just the same as potable water even though it's slightly different. And now there are uh, more examples where um, that process is being reduced to being more purely indirect or direct potable reuse and the technologies not as much required to the same levels as it is in California. And um, that's an interesting direction that the United States is heading. You've both been involved in undertaking some research about, you know, not just the work that GHD has been doing, but a lot of other organizations as well. Can you give me some, I guess, the, the insights that you've gained from that research when it comes to um, potable reuse? Yeah, I would say that this is essentially happening everywhere in the US right now. Um, it's been increasingly accepted in all regions, but certainly the main differentiator is the level of depth of the public um, campaign that has been done there. Is it has it covered all stakeholders, all utilities, the public, the regulators, government, politicians, etc., or is it still, you know, something that is based with the, you know, the utilities at this point? Depending on that, you can define the level at which um, it will be adopted by the community. Uh, uh, technologies, all the technologies are there, have been well known for more than 20 years. It's a matter of how they are used, in what order, sequence, 
um, but it's not a technical issue at this point. It's more of a, as a PR and uh, public related public campaigns. Is there anywhere in the States that have done it really well in your mind? The, the main case is uh, Orange County in, in California. They, they started more than 20 years ago with you know, a feasibility study that progressed into a pilot study, a small, small facility, then to a, what is called a demo plant, a small 5 million gallons a day plant, then a full design of 70 million gallons a day, and now it's 100 million gallons a day. But they had the time to engage everybody, all of the above that I mentioned earlier, and demonstrate the one by one the, the, the you know the safety of the system, the the, the purity of the water, the uh, absence of these emerging contaminants that everybody is worried about, uh, over a twenty year period, mm-hmm. and uh, they were were instrumental on, on getting California to get their own um, framework, regulatory framework for potable reuse. And based on, on that amazing amount of, of work, uh, California will, will be accepting direct potable reuse uh, fairly soon. Do you think, given the research you've done, your experiences in the US, and also, I guess, the conversations you've had with Australian water professionals and the, and the industry, that Australia has a long way to go in this space? One thing we've learned is um, maybe s- some slight cultural differences um, In California, at least, uh, potable reuse would be branded as clean water, pure water. Those terms may not quite fit in Australia. Um, Recycled water for drinking, just tell me what it is. Um, That there's science behind it instead of just branding it. Um, There's differences there. So maybe the industry has been talking about potable reuse the wrong way. Um, So coming from that starting point, uh, maybe that's the uh, maybe that's where things go. So I think you're saying that that our um, our radar for spin is is, is 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 eliminated pretty quickly when it, when it comes to these things. Yeah, which look I think is not necessarily uh, a bad thing. I think um, you know it obviously depends on how you use that. So, so what advice would you have then, Arturo, for communities or suppliers of water? that are looking for potable reuse as, as a possible option for our, our water security issues? Um, well, the, uh, the, the main, main advice would be to engage all the stakeholders in the most meaningful way and with a uh, well-structured plan. So uh, back again, referring to the experience from Orange County, one of the best things they did was to um, produce bottled water and then create these campaigns with elementary schools and high schools where they describe to the kids, you know, the technology and make them early adopters. Then the parents became early adopters, then the environmental groups were behind them, then all of a sudden you eliminated all the uh, backlash against uh, against the, the process. So as, as I said, the, the technology exists and is proven and it's, you know, it's, you can you can have a certain treatment process or a different one, that's not the issue. The issue is your your community to be able to embrace it and accept it. Well, I certainly think Australians understand how precious water is, especially clean drinking water. Uh, joining me today has been Matt Winkleman, the water resource engineer, and Arturo Babano, Florida market leader for water, both from GHD. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>